you take two steps forward and then five or six steps back. It's like nothing makes sense and you can feel like you're just trapped in this cycle that keeps repeating itself. So in this video, I wanted to share 11 signs that you might be stuck in that cycle for those of you who may be going through this right now, because as a whole, these signs give you something to think about and they can help you answer that question. Can this relationship be saved? My name is Christina and this channel is dedicated to helping you recognize and overcome the effects of emotional abuse. And if you think you might be in a relationship with a narcissist, I have a free download that can help you sort that out. It comes with a checklist for each phase of narcissistic abuse, so you can identify whether you can relate to any or all of the phases in your own relationship. The bottom line for you is that it doesn't really matter whether the person is a narcissist. If they are abusive and they are not willing to change, if they are not willing to work on the relationship, then it's time for you to consider your options. So now let's get to the 11 signs that you might be stuck in a narcissist's trap. So the first sign is you feel like you're walking on eggshells around this person. You know that this person, even though they want you to think that they're strong and maybe they want everyone to think they're tough, you know that they have an extremely fragile ego and they cannot handle even the slightest criticism. So when it comes time to work on things, when it comes time to work on the relationship and take accountability, everything is going to be triggering to this person, unless it's blaming you for everything. They're very comfortable with blaming other people for problems, and they're not very comfortable with taking accountability for their own actions and for their own behaviors. So the second sign is that your partner frequently puts you down or belittles you. So this begins to happen in the devaluation phase, and it may start a little bit earlier in the love bombing phase, but if it does, it's usually disguised as a joke. So if you're early in a relationship with someone and they start making jokes at your expense and you clearly aren't here for it, but yet they keep doing it, that's a red flag that at, at best they don't have respect for you. But once we get past the love bombing phase comes devaluation. And this is when the narcissist will attack your sense of self, your self-worth and your self-esteem. In this phase, they very much want you to feel small. They want you to feel like you don't matter. And they'll use lots of tactics to make you feel this way. Gaslighting is a favorite among narcissists. And it's a favorite because it can build up so gradually that you don't even notice. And if you wanna know why most people absolutely just miss the early signs of gaslighting, watch the video that I'm gonna pop in the card right now. So another sign that you might be stuck in a narcissist's trap is that they are isolating you from friends and family. And this may be very obvious when it happens, they may trash talk the people in your life and they may try to pin people against each other. They may outright forbid you from seeing certain people. So it really depends on the person and it depends on the level of abuse that's happening in the relationship. But isolation can also be subtle. And this looks like the partner who doesn't have a problem with you talking to your mother as long as you don't vent or go looking for emotional support because you're being emotionally abused. So they might ridicule you for talking about your problems to other people, or more commonly, they might gaslight you into believing that those are your own relationship problems and they're none of anybody else's business. The truth is, if you're hurting and you need to talk to somebody, that is your business. And you should be able to talk about your business to anyone you see fit. So another sign that you might be in a narcissist's trap is that you're in the habit of apologizing for things that really aren't your fault. Now with this, I will add a caveat. Some people have an issue with people pleasing and those apologies are just so deeply ingrained in them. So if that's you, you're not necessarily apologizing because your partner is making you feel like everything's your fault. You're apologizing because because it's just so deeply ingrained in you. It's like a knee-jerk reaction to take responsibility for everything. But if you're doing this within a toxic relationship, or if you think you might be with somebody who is a narcissist, you're going to know the difference. Because when you're apologizing, you're apologizing because you don't want the atom bomb to go off, right? You don't want that person to explode. And this goes hand in hand with walking on eggshells. You take responsibility for things 
things that aren't your fault so that you can avoid the inevitable conflict. So another sign that you might be in a narcissist's trap is that your partner constantly twists your words and makes you feel crazy. And this is a whole lot of gaslighting right here. So I'll give you an example. Let's say they're spending a weekend away with friends. So you say, oh, that's awesome. And I'd love it if you can just check in with me at some point, or maybe you check in with them and they blow up saying you're controlling and you're jealous and you don't trust me. And it spirals out of control from there. You just said a few words, but they have this entire narrative that they're spinning that is completely false. And then there you are defending yourself. So whenever anyone insists that they know what you meant and they're wrong about it, yet they won't let go of it, that is a red flag. You know you better than anyone. So take it as a major red flag if somebody is trying to tell you who you are, what you meant, or what you're all about. So if you don't know what's going to set your partner off, and you're always afraid that something will, you might be stuck in a narcissist's trap. This is when you end up feeling like you have to walk on eggshells because you have undoubtedly set this person off before over something that seemed really innocent to you in the moment. Usually what's going on here is it's a narcissistic injury. You said something that triggered shame within that person and instead of actually dealing with their emotions, Narcissists are not capable of that, they explode it. And it really doesn't take much to get a narcissist to this point. Remember, these are people who have a very fragile ego and it is extremely easy to cause an injury even when that was not your intention. So another sign that you might be stuck in a narcissist's trap is that you feel like this person almost has two personalities. So they might have a public facing persona that is one thing, and then a private behind closed doors persona that is something completely different. This really speaks to that Jekyll and Hyde personality. People who have been in relationships, especially with covert narcissists, often report that most people would never believe what went on behind the scenes, that this person was capable of that. But you can also see this Jekyll and Hyde personality come out in that person's relationship with you and their interactions with you. So you may find that they're nice and cuddly and warm and fuzzy one moment and then the next moment they're raging out and you don't know why. This is what we call intermittent reinforcement and it's what creates the trauma bond that keeps you feeling bonded to this abusive person. It keeps you feeling like you should have some sort of allegiance to them and it is exactly what keeps most people trapped in these relationships. And there is a whole lot more to be said and understood about the trauma bond. So if this is something that you think you're experiencing, I'm gonna link to a playlist that I suggest you watch because this information is so incredibly enlightening and learning about the trauma bond has helped so many of us understand that a lot of the stuff that we take responsibility for, that we beat ourselves up over, is not really our fault. And people can tell you it's not your fault all day, but when there's science that backs it up, it's a little bit more convincing. So another sign that you might be trapped in a relationship with a narcissist is that your partner engages in some seriously shady behavior. So we're talking about things that are really unethical, maybe immoral. Narcissists are very prone to cheating. But not every narcissist will cheat in a relationship. It really depends on the person, the type of narcissist. But yes, a narcissist is likely to physically cheat. They're likely to emotionally cheat. Really, regardless of the public persona or what they want people to think of them, I would not put anything past a narcissist. So with this, I will also add that narcissists are not the only people who engage in unethical behavior. But a narcissist is highly unlikely to show any sort of true remorse. So they may cheat on you and tell you that it was your fault, or they may steal from you and say, well, you were gonna give me that money anyway. Because a narcissist lacks emotional empathy, they've 
very severely deficient in emotional empathy. They really lack the ability to care about how their actions affect other people. And this becomes very obvious when they're engaging in unethical behavior. So the next sign that you're trapped in a relationship with a narcissist is not always so obvious. And this one is that there's a whole lot of projection in the relationship. So a narcissist will project their own stuff onto you. So it might be things that they're doing, like, you know, for example, if they are cheating, they might accuse you of cheating. That's actually pretty common. They may also accuse you of being a liar, of having bad intentions. As someone with very little empathy, a narcissist is going to assume that everyone is going to be and think kind of like they do. So they're very opportunistic and they kind of see everyone else that way too. So they're not very trusting people and they will project whatever it is that is inside them onto you. Another way that narcissists project and almost all narcissists do this is they knock you down for being too confident. So if you are showing signs of confidence in front of a narcissist, they will knock you down. And this isn't because they have so much confidence and they think they're the only ones who can be that. It's because they actually don't feel confidence and they don't want you to feel it either. As with so many things with a narcissist, it's all smoke and mirrors. So another sign that you may be stuck in a narcissist's trap is that the person you're with cannot accept any accountability and everything is your fault. So they may say something like, you're lucky I put up with you, or you're so lucky to have me, things like that. Because they're the ones who are perfect and they have to put up with all your imperfections. So when you're in a relationship with a narcissist, what you're really seeing are patterns of all of these things. It's not something that just happens one time. You're seeing that this is consistent with this person. They can't admit they're wrong and you always have to be wrong. They cannot empathize with you, but they always expect your empathy. They can hurt you in ways that you would never expect someone who actually loved you to be able to follow through on. And they can do it without remorse. And this might be why we end up asking that question. Is there something really wrong with my partner? Because throughout the relationship, you'll see little, little glimmers of things that you've maybe never seen before. Or maybe you've seen them in someone else who was highly abusive and probably a narcissist themselves. You may even get the feeling that there's a sense of humanity that is missing from this person. And really what gives you that sense is their lack of empathy. Emotional empathy is what allows us to connect with people on a deeper level. And a narcissist does not have very much emotional empathy, so they can't connect on that level. And it appears as something's just really off. And on top of all the abusive behavior, you get the sense that just something's missing. And whenever you get those little glimmers, it's like getting a peek behind the mask. And you should know that there are some things that you can do that will trigger that peek behind the mask. So you can pay attention to these things if you want to get a better feel for who this person is, or you can try to avoid these things if you're trying not to set this person off. Either way, I do go into detail on what those things are in this video right here. So if you're interested, give it a watch and I'll see you next time.